have tables all set up all the city hall. So we'll be back to our little uh, little circle uh, groups. Okay. But um, so tonight is we're going to introduce you to six different styles of prayer that we have. Now, obviously, uh, like Mandy was talking about, there's a lot of different ways that you can pray, a lot of different styles. I mean, within the Catholic Church, there's a lot of styles. And there are going to be two um, that we're going to formally go together as we call well, actually three that will go together um, throughout the year. One will be adoration. One will be the station of the cross, and the other one will be the rosary. But you will be introduced to the rosary tonight. Okay. So let's start like we always start every night. Um, let's start with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this prayer experience. Let us keep an open mind and an open heart to listen to you. Fill us with your peace so that as we journey on this path with you, that we can be our you can be our source of love and grace. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you. So we have six prayer stations. We have journaling, prayer through music. The Divine Mercy Chaplet, the Introduction to the Rosary, Lexio Divina, and Elaborate. Okay. So there are six different. What I would say is we're just introducing these different prayer styles. Some of them are going to really speak to you, some of them are not. Okay. But we need to be respectful and we need to um, just support each other because when when one prayer experience may not suit you, it may suit someone that's in my to you. Okay? And you never know how God's going to speak to you. It blows my mind sometimes after this. We'll get it gathered again afterwards. And some people always say, I thought I was going to hate that. And it turned out I love that. So keep your mind and your heart open to all of this experience. Um, you will have 12 minutes in your brief um, first station, and then we'll move you around. So the numbers, how they're going to go is one is out in the school hallway in the outcast. It's because you guys will be saying something. So you're on, number one will be there. Number two is Lexio in the green tablecloth. Number three will be journaling in the yellow tablecloth. Number four is the labyrinth in Hurley Hall. Number five is the pink tape cloth, which is the introduction to the rosary. And number six is hiding in the other hall over here in the screen. And that's music. Does anybody have any questions? Well, no, because we're going to be all guiding you. Um, so if you notice on your name tag, there is a number. That's the station you're going to start with. So all the ones are going to be together, all the twos are going to be together, all the threes. I know if you're here with somebody and you guys have different numbers, that's okay. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's nice to be different and then when we all come back, you guys can talk about it. Yeah, I like that one. I didn't like this one. Okay, so it's okay to be on the same station. So um, if there is no question, oh, since we're in a new facility, let me tell you, restrooms are right away. Where Diana's standing. <laughs> you go down that hall to the right, and then to the left, one is up to the right. Okay, so it can't be over here, right? No, no, you guys can be separated. Okay, <laughs> hey, that's your mom. Oh, 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 oh. You know how many years it took me to find her? I know. You'll get to find her again tonight. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to gather all back here again. If you start at two, then how do you get to get, wait till the, the end to get to one? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's like, uh, what's it called with the golf? Sure. The golf team. Yeah. Yeah. And then you come to one. Sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. All right. If there's no other question, then go ahead. Um, you'll have a team leader at every station. So go ahead and start. Number one's over there. Number two. She's in charge. Number three. Yeah, I'll, I'll come around. 
Well, you didn't tell me that she wanted the lights on, and you couldn't find the lights on. See? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Standing up here, I don't know if you know. Well, they're meant to burn, but they're incense matches, so they're like not supposed to leave them lit. You're supposed to like blow them out, so it's gonna be a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. It's dark back right here. There's somebody here. Yeah, we're here. Are you in six? Yep. All right. Well, come join. Join, join. Do you want to sit? Do you want to sit on the bench, or I can give you a chair? No, I'm right here. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm not a friend of the class guy. Oh, okay. Well, are any of you guys fans of music already? You're not a fan of music at all. Like, what type of music? sort of thought about music in the church or some sort of preconceived notions about what it's like. But what I kind of wanted to share today is that music is there's a lot of different options for musical hands, number one. And the other thing is that um, it's embedded, like the hymns are embedded with scripture and you can learn a lot about the church and about scripture and about the story of Christ through music and church hymns, and that's how it kind of becomes also a form of prayer. But um, hymns have been written, and even traditional hymns, and there's a traditional hymn I put on your guys' chair that we're going to listen to today. Um, they're also written from the author's form of prayer and trying to overcome um, turmoil or trauma in their life. And I feel like knowing that that is where can come from can help us relate to others, kind of like how we relate to saints and their stories and their life stories. Well, there's you can also connect with these stories through the hymns that we learn or listen to. So I want to start with this one. still on the internet. So the words are in front of you, but then there's also the story of the origin of this song. So I want you to read that, if you can, while we're listening. Oh, <laughs> 
So this, this version was from 2016, but this was written in the late 1800s. Um, does anybody want to summarize what you've read about? Just give a short summary, especially with people on Zoom that maybe couldn't read the story. Let's share. Yeah, so Cynthia said, everything that you can imagine that could go bad happened to, to um, Horatio. He lost his, all of his family. He lost his daughters, lost his business, lost his son, lost four daughters. Yeah. And, and, and I don't think it shares in here, but the, they, they dedicated the rest of their lives to like mission work after losing everything. And then the person who wrote the music like died in a tragic train accident too. So, um, but are these things that are relevant today that we can connect with? Anybody want to share anything about what how it makes you guys feel? He and Amanda can get it on our job. And lots of lots of things. And then a little case called Canada and lots of good cultural and this one. Yeah. Yeah. Talking with others, expressing your tragedy, your experience. A lot of that is what's written in the hymns that we have um, and that we can, might not think we can connect with, right? Um, but we all can connect with the human experience. Um, there's a lot of different versions of this song. The other thing I wanted to share. Um, that is contemporary, and if contemporary, you know, worship music isn't isn't your jam, I mean, that song's recorded as, as there's a country version, there's an R&B version, there's like every single version of this particular song because it's just so relatable, and you find that in a lot of our traditional hymns. Um, it's been recorded so many times in so many different genres, um, so if you like a different genre, you can find it. And so that's something else that I, I want to pass around. I didn't make enough copies for everybody because I have a QR code at the top. And if you want to take your phone and just scan it, then you have access to this. And the reason I would do that instead of making copies and sharing it is because every single one of these are hyperlinked to YouTube music. So you have a starting point to listen to um, hymns and worship music. And I have them separated. I have it all the way back to the ninth and 10th century. There's a few songs um, from like a, the original like church music and Gregorian chants. 
and then um, I have traditional hymns um, that started in the um, like this one that were written in the late 19th century um, and I have different version of those some of those they're more contemporary versions but they're still traditional hymns and then I have it separated to um, R&B R and B songs, some contemporary, some traditional versions, country, and then our contemporary music and contemporary. Um, some of it's not specifically Catholic, and then and some of it is specifically Catholic music. But I want to pass this around in case you want to scan the QR code and have the list. I put like my email address because if there's something you really like and you want us to share, like this is a living document, so. Um, we can add to it. And I made it at an editable list. So you want to just go ahead. If you know how to hyperlink, you can. If you don't know how to do that technology, you can just email me and I will add it. So pass this around. What do, you, do we need the green uh, churches have me on the flyers? You don't have younger kids. Or... Do I? What do you mean? Sing. Like, do, does our church? No, no. Anymore, you know, around today. You never really hear of it. Um, I mean, not, you know, we specific, like, choir. large choirs right now. He's asking does about... It, every, every large parish has their own choir. We have a choir that sings at 9.30. We have a choir that sings at 5 p.m. with more contemporary music. Uh, if you go to the Archdiocese, the Cathedral in downtown L.A., they have a beautiful choir. Huge pipe organ. So yeah, I got it. Oh, okay. I'll take. Okay. QR code. So, is there anything you guys want to talk about? Where we have time here, and any else, anything else you want to talk about when it comes to music? Anything you specifically like to listen to? Anything? Artists that you've enjoyed that's Tennessee Ernie Ford. Tennessee Ernie Ford's great. Oh, we have one minute. We only have one minute. So I'm a country music person myself, but I had to dig deep for contemporary music. And usually Tawny is here. Tawny's my contemporary music. And she talks about that more. What about you, Stephanie? Um, I have this group called Hillsong United. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hillsong like oh, Hill, okay. Hill United. Mm -hmm. That's contemporary, right? Yeah, I would say that's more contemporary. I like John Michael Talbot, who's mm -hmm. contemporary, but he has a very Franciscan flair. He works in a lot of the Psalms, a lot of scripture, and he just does different kinds of music, but it's ba basically acoustic guitar. I with, think I have him on here. I think I have them on. I do. I got one. Okay, good. Well, I hope you guys, your takeaway is to try something in one of these genres and, and just listen to it and see if it speaks to you, if it is something that works for you. Who already uses music no, to no. help frame their prayer? Or to get them in a the mood to pray. Anybody listen to any type of music that helps you center on God or faith when you're driving? Yeah. I love the weekday masses, but the huge difference to me between the weekday masses and the Sunday mass is music, right? And and the Sunday mass, it has, I don't, it's more moving to me. You know, it's a huge difference if you go to a weekday mass, 30 minutes in and out, which is nice, but you're, you're missing that, that music it's all through our mass, and we sing liturgy. I'm all sure. right. Does anybody have any more? Anybody have any? If you want to take those, you can take it. If you want to leave it, you can leave it.
Stay with your same group. When you you know sit down to write on your journal, it's just things of what you're thankful for, um, what your goals are for the year. Um, confession time. You might want to ask the Lord to forgive you for whatever you know, something that you want to be forgiven for, or um, or you can go and ask the Lord. You know, I've got my anger today about. You just want to write down what your feelings are. And so, and then also you want to make you write down on the blessings. You can do that also, but um, you could also um, put on like a prayer request or you want to ask the Lord to pray to intercede for a certain person. You can do that. And then later on, you can check your journal to see what type of, um, if he answered you, you know, um, what type of answer he might have given you um, for, for your writing. And we did um, there was a question that you could write in the journal. Uh, okay. I want to take one. We're oh, sharing sorry. here. No, it's okay. I thought you had one with you. We're sharing. sharing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
You want us to do just one? Or? You could do work on all of them right now. Oh. And also, a good idea too is just to keep your journaling simple. Even sometimes you just might not want to write one word to help you reflect on it later on. Just remind you of what you want to think about. Mm -hmm. If you want to move closer to the table, I'm going to pause the video as people are writing. Those of you who are watching at a later date can journal on the questions that were provided. No camera door. I don't think we can hear any of this anyway. Nobody's talking loud enough, and there's background noise. Oh, mostly writing. Why I paused it during the writing. Next station. So, can you speak up just? How many of you are familiar with the rosary and have prayed the rosary before? You have it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. You're welcome. So before we actually start getting an explanation on how to pray the rosary, we're going to discuss uh, the background on the rosary. So the rosary is a meditation prayer. And meditation means bringing to mind as you pray the Our Father and Hail Marys during each decade, the various scenes from the life of Jesus and his mother from gospel accounts. Meditating on all 20 mysteries is akin to contemplating the entire life of Jesus from his conception and birth through his childhood into his public ministry, his teachings, his establishment of the sacraments, and then his suffering, death, resurrection, and triumphant return to heaven. It sometimes takes months or years for this form of mental prayer to become habitual. So be patient. Begin by placing yourself into the scene of the particular mystery as you pray, imagining the sights, smells, sounds, and emotions that Jesus, Mary, Joseph, and other participants experienced during the actual events. It is also okay to meditate on the meaning of the words of the prayer as you pray them. Some people focus on a single word. For example, try contemplating the meaning of the word now. It is also okay to bring to mind the people for whom you are offering the rosary and your desire for God to help them. The word rosary comes from Latin and means a garland of roses, the rose being one of the flowers used to symbolize the Lord to Mary. There are 20 mysteries reflected upon in the rosary, and these are divided into the five joyful mysteries set on Monday and Saturday, the five luminous mysteries set on Thursday, the five sorrowful mysteries set on Tuesday and Friday, and the five glorious mysteries set on Wednesday and Sunday. As an exception, the joyful mysteries are set on Sundays during Christmas, while the sorrowful mysteries are set on the Sundays of Lent. If you go over your book to the middle, this very So we always begin, listen, and this is a rosary. So yours looks a little different, but we're going to start with the crucifix. So you should all have a cross at the bottom. So we hold the cross in our hand. 
if you want to use your rosary, that's fine. And we begin by saying the, the sign of the cross. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And we begin with the Apostles' Creed. And the Apostles' Creed is what we believe as Catholics. So let's pray the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then the next single bead on the rosary, we pray the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the next three beads together is the, the virtues, Mary, faith, hope, and love. So we begin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And then on the next bead, we pray a glory be. Glory be to the Father, to the Son. And isn't it on the chain? Oh, what? Yes, because we're right here. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And then open your pamphlet, and you will see the uh, mysteries. So today is Tuesday, so we're going to meditate on the first mystery, which is the agony in the garden. And you would read, if you have the meditation in front of you, you can read what, a med what the meditation is for that mystery, or you can just think of it in your mind. So it's the agony of the in the garden when Jesus was in the garden before he was going to be crucified. And going a little further, Jesus fell on his face and prayed, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. <clears throat> so we're going to just meditate on that as we pray the next 10 beats. And we always begin after the meditation and before we begin the mysteries, the decade. We say another Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So on the first bead, so you can hold that bead, you can rub it between your fingers if that helps you to, to focus and just to meditate on the agony in the garden. We'll begin with a Hail Mary, so if you need to turn your book back to, for the prayer, that's fine. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The next week. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Last night, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then at the end of the Hail Mary, we say another glory be. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And at the end of each decade, after the glory be, this is when we pray the Fatima prayer. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. And then on the center bead is when you would you would think to yourself the next uh, mystery, which would be the uh, scourging when Jesus was scourged at the pillar. And you would read the meditation. You would pray in Our Father, and then you proceed and you pray the ten Hail Marys for that next one and you would follow that along so um that's all that we would have to, time for tonight when you finish the whole decade when you've done all 10 there is this prayer that you pray at the end and it's called hail holy queen and that's what you pray when you're all finished um, we this is a lot to take in tonight and we're just going over it very quickly and we don't expect you to, to get it, okay, if, if this is new to you. But next month in October, we're going to do a class. One of our classes will be on Mary and the saints, and we will go more into depth. But tomorrow is Wednesday. So if you want to take, try tomorrow, pray, try praying even one decade. It doesn't have to be the first one. If you want to pick another one, you know, that just kind of speaks to your heart, that's fine. Just practice praying the Ten Hail Marys. And um, it it becomes easier the more we do it. So you can, you can pray when you're walking. You can pray when you're driving, going to work. You can pray in, in, on the beach. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be at church. Your home or maybe a break from work. 
I like to do mine in the labyrinth, you know, like that. Uh-huh. And you know what helped me was YouTube. Like you'll do Wednesday's rosary and it will have it all. And that's how I learned how to do the rosary. Like, cause I, yeah. I, I, I just couldn't get it, you know? And then I have, I have this little book that I bought <laughs> and um, I still refer to it, but it, it gives several meditations and different mm-hmm. prayers and breaks it down. And so I really, this is kind of my, my go to when I'm just sitting and I'm not bringing it. I, mm-hmm. I can't. I can't read and walk at the same time. Bishop um, Barron has a good one where he does all the mysteries and he goes. Yes. It's like 28 minutes or something. Right. It's and so, so the mystery, if you pray the rosary, it can take as little as 15 minutes. It can take 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's as long as you want it to be. The more prayers that you're saying and the contemplation and and it's not something you have to rush through. Mm-hmm. Just take your time as. Deacon Bill said, you know, it's a meditation, and it's all scripture. Every single history, you can find where it's at in the Bible. So, And they're listed here in your booklet, so you can go home and, and you know, look them up, read a little bit, read read the verses before, read the verses after. It, it puts you in the scene, and it kind of brings the rosary to life a little bit more. And the as Say it's the more you pray it. Well, well, you know, I, I always love to have the physical version, but a lot of times we can't buy that. But I have an app on my phone called Buy the Rosary. And it's one of the best grocery apps that I've found. I have a bunch of those. I've got, I've got I Read, which is my morning prayers. I've got I Missile, and I've got an I Bible, and then I've got I Rosary. And it's it actually has voices to it, but it's, it's so you can put it on your and while you're in the car driving, you can actually listen to it. I use it a lot when I do vigils because it has the, just the beautiful meditations and has all the prayers. And you, and you can you know just put your headphones in yeah. and you can listen to it That's and pray along with it as you're. And if you ever do not have a rosary with you, guess what? You've got 10 fingers, so uh-huh. you could just lift your fingers. You know? I carry a little so, one, like a, the little wrist one. I yeah. know, like in yeah. my purse, just in uh-huh. case, you yeah. know, so I just do it, redo sure. it. But if you ever don't, you've got mm-hmm. 10 fingers. That's so, good. We have a thumb you know. one in our cars. Yeah. You do? Uh, what, yeah, and when I'm driving, I'll, I'll just rub on the on the when I'm That is great, huh? Yeah. yeah. So whatever I can barely you know, drive. Whatever you need to help to grow, you know, spiritually, and apps are apps are wonderful. But all right, so take this home and well, I know, I know, but if you need yeah. a little something to help you to walk through it yeah. as you're doing it, that's wonderful. And then Mary said in October, we're going to go more in depth on it. So October 24th. That's one of my favorite. I started out doing a 30 day one and it's been two years that I do it. You know, so yes. I just, I feel like if when I don't do it, I'll even do it, at, you know, sometimes two or three times. <laughs> and it's great to pray, even just keep eating the Hail Marys, like at night when you can't sleep and your mind is just going crazy. Just just center yourself and just pray Hail Mary. And it just bring peace. And yeah. All right, guys. Today we're going to, uh, in, in, in this, in this table, we're talking about a sort of prayer. Sorry? Okay, a sort of prayer. Prayer is Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina is Latin for sacred reading. So, therefore, by definition, every time you sit there on the Bible, you are praying. It is a way of reading scripture where you gradually let go of your own agenda and open yourself to what God wants to say to you. What happens is most people are only listening to what they think is important. In this case, we want you to open up your mind completely and absorb the scripture, what it says, and what it says, word for word. <clears throat> Read slowly and lovingly, pausing whenever the words draw you into silence. 
close your eyes and experience the meaning of the words that you are reading. But even more, experience the presence, God's presence found in it. Let the reality of the word become more and more part of who you are, your being. Listen to how the spirit in you is guiding, inspiring, healing, or even calling you. See if it connects to any issue in your life of particular importance at that moment. It may be a problem, suffering that you have, a decision that you have to make, or maybe even a relationship. Stay quiet with whatever is unfolding and trust your feelings. The word is a messenger of love. Allow yourself to get the message and feel love. Don't feel you have to arrive at a conclusion or explanation. Most people read this and say, that's what it means. Don't do that. Let any feelings, thoughts, or doubts arise. And be non-judgmental as you're reading that scripture. Normally, we read quickly. The eye and the brain thinks about what the eyes read and we make a conclusion. We don't want you to do that. Lectio Divina is done with the eye of the heart and the ear of the heart. So I want you to open up your heart as you're reading the scripture and let it come in. Don't try and bypass your brain because that tries to have a conclusion. Just absorb the feeling and figure out where it is that you want to see or where it needs to be. Take your time, be open, and be very slow through the process. Yes. <laughs> During Lecto Divina, you may be sitting in your favorite chair or by your favorite window with a cup of tea. I do that when I do an adoration. I'll go on over, I'll come over with a cup of coffee, I'll sit on down, and I'll read the gospel for the day and, and allow myself to listen to what God is trying to tell me. Okay? Open your mind and then your heart by paying attention to the text moment by moment. Be ready and willing to be surprised. If you are open, you will be surprised. Talk on it, you know. I, I should have known that. And oh, that I should be doing this, or I need to be doing this, or this is a great thank you very much, Lord. I'll go do what you want me to do. You know, that kind of stuff. Be surprised. There are four steps to what you to be. Okay. First stage is you read a passage of scripture slowly so that it sinks in. Okay, you need to do it slowly. Allow a word or words to jump out at you. If needed, read the scripture, and we will a few times. Okay? So you just allow yourself to absorb the scripture reading and see if there's a word that just, or a phrase that just jumps out at you, whether it's feeling or whatever. Second stage, let the word or words sink into your heart and mind. Try and figure out why the word or words that you are attracted to are, are the, why they're attracted, why you are attracted to them. Okay, there's a reason. Third stage, leave your thinking aside and simply let your heart speak to God. That's that's important. Okay, once you start doing that, then you have a relationship, then you have communication. Just allow yourself the ability to open up yourself and let God talk to you. And the fourth stage is enjoy his presence and let God love you. If you love yourself, it's easy. If you don't love yourself, if you don't think yourself, you're going to, yeah, that's what we're going to work on that. But the thing is, is that if you absolutely allow yourself to feel loved, you will get this warm, peaceful feeling inside of you that God is, in fact, showering you with his grace. Okay. It may seem like nothing is happening, but it is within you. Put your head on God's shoulders and rest. So we're gonna we're gonna have an opportunity to experience this. So I'm going to read to you a couple of verses through the scripture. I'll read it slowly and I'll do it more than once so that you get the opportunity. So you may want to just close your eyes as you listen and just see what pops out to you, what what you hear, where it touches you. This is from the book of Romans, and it says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. And we boast and hope for the glory of God. Again, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Is there any word, phrase, feeling that grabbed you? You were listening to that good feeling? Access and faith. Access and faith. Access and faith. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's how we get there. Yeah. Through whom we have gained access by faith. Anything else? Peace. Mm. We have peace with God. Peace with God. Yes. With God. Oh. The part that struck me was to this grace in which we stand. It's the, the image, I, I think, a picture. So it's the image of the grace is there and I'm standing. Stand and not it's, it's, and I'm justified. I've been justified by faith, and I can just stand there and I boast in the hope of the glory of God because of that faith. But the image of standing I'll just that one's just, just vibrating us on me. Now, this is like a good religion. It was very like, <laughs> point, like to the point where it was just vibrating. Somehow it just vibrated. Yeah, that's that's where it strikes me. Feel confident, mm -hmm. feel proud. You know, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, the journal. <laughs> yeah, standing um, in the grace. Uh, did you guys understand what the, the meaning of grace is? It was, it was a, Grace is uh, another word for God's love. So when you're standing in grace, you're standing in God's love. Michael says that God's love is always on us like a shower. You just can't get out of it. It's just pouring down on you all the time. Yeah, so if, if, you, if you're conscious of it, uh, people can throw uh, mud at you and come in just not look at Because it's going to Because it can't stay. So what do you what do you think about this type of prayer experience? This is this is it's reading the Bible. It's it's taking time to read it, all, and yet we're communicating with God. So what do you think about that? I like the way it sounds. What's the word? Lectio divina. Lectio divina. L e c t i o. I like that. Divine reading. It's just. Yeah, it is. And it's well, a real thing. <laughs> well, no, it moment. is. It is. It's a prayer. prayer it's a up. And you can do it randomly. Just go to the Bible and read. And see what, what is God talking about? As we were talking about, you can read the same scripture 10 times in 10 days and get 10 different thought processes. The, uh, the prayer, we talked last week about some ways to have prayer in our life. And one of them was you know, through the daily bread or through, there's numerous applications that you can use. I have a particular devotional guide that I use and it always has at least three scripture verses. And it's speaking to me as if Jesus himself is speaking to me directly. But those verses, that's how I read those verses. It's slowly and, and never fails. One of those, <laughs> he's got something to tell me. <laughs> I, I hear his voice. I have to read them out loud. Yeah, I just read them, especially when it's spoken. 
devotion to the skin. I think it just would slow down when we read out loud. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading in my head. <laughs> could, 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 you, could you guys see yourself doing this type of prayer during the day? And maybe even as part of a, a form of prayer that you engage in. Because you've already picked a four. <laughs> You know, this is this is one where you could you know read a read a passage you know, first thing in the morning and then just shower go to work drive on your way to work finish your work yeah. so everybody's doing something yeah. yeah 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 yeah
and she felt a calling. Uh, her parents didn't particularly want her to leave the farm. She was the one who broke up the pot. Would you like to say that? I was just asking about the end. So these ones were the ones that you're keeping here, correct? You weren't giving them to your I wasn't. No, I don't have another one. I'm just trying to figure out where we're going. It's other than it's, it's other. okay. We got worse from the. the uh, I think maybe from the rosary. The labyrinth. Oh, the labyrinth. Okay. So anyway. Um, Echoes even. She, she felt a calling. And she, when she was 19 years old, she went to this dance. And when she was at the dance, she heard the Lord say to her, how long will I have to wait for you? You know, you need to come. So she, she went home. She packed up a bag. She went to Warsaw and started I have one the doors of different convents to try to get him to be You didn't him. get any? Oh. Nobody wanted her. Well, that, that means that there were people who aren't preparing for sacraments that took rosaries. Didn't she make that clear to Mary that it was just for people who were making sacraments? No, I'm the one that was passing it out to everybody. I didn't know we had not Well, there were 48. I have to get them, get them some that I think I'm going to congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. Well, so I can still get some. Like, Where are they? It's kind of distracting. I wonder if they can. there on the top floor. You walk into the um, oh, office. Oh. And then maybe you'll come into your last visit. Yeah, she's stayed in Poland. She was in Warsaw. I'm not having one. Um, one here. So she, she um, started having these visitations on February the 22nd, 1931. Jesus appeared to her in person, just like you, just came and appeared to her. And this is the, the image of the divine mercy. This is the image that an artist made that Jesus asked her to make. And so they got an artist and she directed him. She made this image and this image is especially a blessing. It, it in and of itself is just a blessing to have. The image itself is a blessing. So she was having these, these visitations and her spiritual director, Father Sapochka, said, I want you to write everything down that he tells you. Okay, so here she is with this rudimentary education, but out of obedience, she wrote in her own way, as best as she could, everything that Jesus told her. And that's where we get this diary of St. Faustine. I don't know the diary of St. Faustina before, but it's all about the divine mercy and what Jesus told her about the divine mercy was, was in this, this book, this little book that she wrote. Of course, it had to be, it had to be translated and interpreted and made, and made sense of because of her lack of education, but it's just this beautiful, um, a beautiful diary of her experiences speaking with Jesus and the things that he said. So one of the things he said was to make this, this picture. And he also you know, told her about the Divine Mercy Chaplet, about all these different things about the Divine Mercy. So the other thing that I wanted to let you know about that, I thought was really interesting. One of the visions, that she said she had a vision in which she saw her own canonization. I mean, that sounds like not very humble, but it's what she saw. And she said, I saw my canonization and I don't understand it, but somehow all the nuns who are in Warsaw got to see it as it was happening. But how could they see it if they're in Warsaw and, I'm, and it was in Rome? Well, in the year 2000, John Paul II canonized her as the first saint of the new millennium, and they had the big jumbotrons, and they, you know, they live fed it to the convent, and so they were all seeing it happen. And so she saw a vision of this, you know, before it ever happened. But isn't that kind of, isn't that an interesting story? I think it's just amazing the things that God does. So in, in two thousand, she no, she saw the vision back in like. 
so long. So yeah, there's nothing that would make me think that yeah that, that would happen at that time because she was she didn't know about it. So we're going to now take a look at the the chaplet of the divine mercy, which is a part of this portion. And I made a little picture, and you have I hope some papers. Did you get a paper of the divine mercy? And a few extras here, and there's some more information. There's some hold parts too of the image of the divine mercy. I wonder, I love that Anthony said also to a, a reminder that you know from his heart you see these rays coming out. The white ray is his mercy, and the red ray is his blood, and it's his love just pouring forth for us. And you'll hear you'll be able to understand more and more this this mercy. As we talk about the Divine Mercy Chapel, now this is my little Let's see. Because you do it on just a regular rosary. You have rosaries, but you don't have to move the ones. Um, and you start at the crucifix, and you do the sign of the cross, and you do the sign of the Holy Spirit. You do the opening prayer, um, which is it says it's optional. Um, I always do it, and everybody I know who prays it always does it. But it's you expire to Jesus, the source of, source of life, flesh of your souls, the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable, divine mercy, and thou whole world, yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in thee. Blood and water, which catch forth from the heart of Jesus, and they repeat that three times. And then they do an Our Father on those three beads. Usually, these beads, like on the when you do the rose, these two beads are usually how various, but it, you do it just a little bit different on the divine mercy, obviously. It's very different. Do the Our Father. Hail Mary, and then you do the Apostles' Creed on this last bead. And then you start a continual cycle around your rosary of two prayers. One of them is, I put the Eternal Father, but it goes, Eternal Father, I offer you body, blood, soul, and divinity, the dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're doing it with another person, they say, in atonement for our sins, and those are the Holy Part of the reason I, I that prayer is so appealing to me is I always think of the Blessed Sacrament, body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's who Jesus was, and that was the sacrifice and the person he's making for us upon that altar, which I think is really beautiful. And then it goes around, you, you say, save the sorrow and passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And you just repeat that. Ten times on those ten on that day. You put that all the way around the rosary. So then after you completely finish going all the way around, it doesn't take the, the divine mercy chapel does not take a long time to pray because it's much it's much shorter than the rosary. Um, when you get to the end, you have the concluding prayer, uh, you know, holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Mercy on us and on the whole world. And you repeat that three times. And then there's also another optional ending prayer. Uh, again, it's optional, but those of us who pray this prayer, we always pray it because it's just so beautiful. Eternal God, infinite mercy is endless in the treasury of compassion and exhaustible. But kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair. Or become despondent or with great confidence, submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. So that's basically the divine mercy chocolate. Um, again, does anybody have any questions? Seven to ten minutes. No. Um, <laughs> somebody asked a really good question, I thought, at one of the groups. And she said, no, I heard you're not supposed to do repetitive prayers all the time. It's just empty, you know, it's just words and you don't don't be like the pagans kind of thing. That the 
the thing is, is that it, it's it's not empty words. It's it's like each time you say that, you're you're lifting up your heart to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is those rays are coming on you. They're they're blessing you and giving you those blessings. And it's just a it's a really wonderful devotion. Same thing with rosary. People say, well, it's just, you know, it's just this repetitive thing. It's, your, it's what you're doing in your mind. It's not just, it's not just those words. It's, it's what you're doing. It's sort of like um, today I was um, listening. I was, I was looking at the news and I saw about that horrible flood that killed thousands of people in Libya. And my first response was, I just grabbed my rosary and started praying to them for such a because you just think, Jesus, have mercy on them. Have mercy on them. Whoever's buried, you just start praying for them. And he and he's there. And he there's there's no prayer we say to him goes unheard. You know, so it's it's a really I I love this devotion. Um, but you know, hope that I gave you some good information. And again, uh, you can look at it online. Oh, say that again. Yeah. Yeah. John Ruby has several teachings in the Awesome. And you can also go to the uh, Marians of Divine Mercy, the Marians, Marian Fathers. They have all kinds of wonderful information about the Divine Mercy. That's their. That's what they promote. That's their thing. Uh -huh. All right. Has anybody ever heard of a labyrinth before? I had heard of the labyrinth, like the movie or whatever. But that was all. That was all I had before I came to um, RCIA about three, or three years ago. Um, so I'm going to read to you about a labyrinth, uh, what it is, and what purpose it serves for us in terms of prayer, our prayer life. Um, and then we'll have you walk the labyrinth to some music, and then we'll have a little bit of sharing afterwards. The labyrinth is a spiritual tool serving as a walk centering activity. It engages the whole body. You are physically walking as well as engaging the heart, mind, and soul. Labyrinth images are found in many cultures. The first record of Christians using the labyrinths in churches was in 324 AD. The most well-known Christian labyrinth was built in the floor of the great Catholic cathedral in C-H-A-R-T-E-S in French. Chartois. Ch oh my God, I wouldn't have come up with that one. Chartois, France. Now I know. 1201. When you walk a labyrinth, walk in silence. Focus on your intention for walking, or you can read a prayer and meditate on that prayer while you walk. A labyrinth has a single purposeful path that winds from the edge into the center. The same path leads back out to the edge again. It resembles the indirect path of our lives. Unlike a maze, a labyrinth is not a puzzle. It is a path to be walked. The way in is the way out. As you walk, let your body assume the pace it wants. As you walk, breathe naturally. As you walk, if you pass someone, just pass quietly. Let others pass you. When you enter the center, stay there a few minutes and meditate on your journey of life. Then retrace your steps out. Pause at the threshold of the labyrinth. Take a few deep breaths. Allow about one minute between people as you enter. Let go of the details of your life as you step into the path. Quiet your mind and listen to God. If you would like, there are some prayers that you can use while you walk. Once you get to the center, stay there as long as you would like and then retrace your steps to exit the labyrinth. So the first person will walk here, pause at the beginning, and begin their walk in. The next person, as soon as the first person enters, about a 
of these steps, you can come here and pause, wait till the other person gets to the other side, and then you can begin and so on. And you will walk through around to the middle and then walk back and just watch out. And one thing I noticed last time is there was a confusion about do I walk on the lines or between the lines? You're walking between the lines. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going to play some quiet music for you. And while you're walking, anybody who's ready to start first, you can begin when you're ready. So I pronounced that wrong. That cathedral is Chartres. Okay, Chartres. It, but in uh, Americans will say, I think Chartres. Okay. I haven't attempted it all night long. <laughs> Chartres. Chartres. <laughs> Charts. That's my best get Charts. Charters. <laughs> Charters. Okay, whenever you're ready, you may begin. If you'd like to borrow a prayer, you're welcome to borrow one. In the scene, you're ready. Second, we're green and blue. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mandy. Happy birthday to you. She's like putting my age out there. Look at her. Thanks a lot. You can take one and you can hear. And you're younger than me. Look at the big four zero. Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday. Um, how was tonight? Did everybody appreciate tonight? Learn a little something? Yeah. 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 Very good. Well, next week, uh, when we gather in this room, we'll be at tables again, like I said. Um, and we're going to start talking about sacraments. That's a big thing for the Catholic Church. Um, a lot of misconceptions about that as well. So I think it's Matthew and Tawny that will be leading you next week. Matthew's over there. So they'll be leaving you. Um, like I said, Don and I won't be here, but uh, you guys are all in great hands. That's really wonderful. So can you kind of stay behind for just a little bit? And then um, we're good. We, we okay. have a night of prayer, so I think we're okay. Yeah. Send them off with a blessing. Sir, yes. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Have a great week. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Oh, thank you.